So in the previous videos and recordings and examples, you have understand that for a system to be in equilibrium, all right, there are two conditions. Uh, let's just recall them. Number one, it should have a zero net force. Let me change the color. Ah, there we go. Zero net force in any direction. X, Y, up, down, left, right. Okay. It should also have zero net torque. So no clockwise, anti-clockwise turning about any given point. So I prefer to write this in equation format because it's a little bit more nicer to look at. Sum of the forces here will be zero. The sum of the torque here will be zero. But when using it in equation, sometimes you want to write sum of the clockwise is equal to sum of anti-clockwise. Just like maybe you can say sum of the force in the x direction must be zero. And sum of the forces in the y direction must be zero. Okay, or you can say up equal to down, left equal to right. So we have formed equations, and sometimes equation and resolving vector is a good enough technique for you to answer questions. Okay, so this is the vector method, a vector resolution. So we resolve vectors, and then maybe if certain forces are not in the right direction, we will uh, resolve them, and then we apply the conditions. That is the first method. But as you can tell from this part here that I've drawn, there's a second method uh, that sometimes can be a bit helpful, which is knowing how to draw vector diagrams. Okay, so that will be the second method. And I want to point out that knowing one method generally is not good enough. Okay, but the one that has more quantitative power is vector resolution, meaning you can split the vectors. All right, we have done this before in your uh, chapter one. But I want to apply some vector diagrams in this video just to show you how to draw that. Okay, so let's look at the first example. All right, there's a horizontal rod here. And as you can tell, this is a very clean diagram, meaning they didn't label any of the forces for you. So if you've already watched the previous videos, you understand that there are basically a list of forces that we can go through to see whether they exist and also to find out how to draw them. But first things first, whenever you want to draw a vector diagram for a system, you have to identify the system. So now I'm going to take the metal rod as my system. So my metal rod is the system in equilibrium. Of course, you also may be thinking, teacher, ah, the lamp cannot. Ah. Lamp also in equilibrium. Ayala, ah, lamp is in equilibrium. But, you know, if I assume the center of gravity of the lamp is here, and I draw out the forces acting on the lamp, I just have tension in the string that is holding up the lamp, and I have mg. This is a very underwhelming vector diagram. Doesn't need resolution. Doesn't need uh vector. Doesn't doesn't need anything. It's just okay. So we don't talk about the lamp because the lamp is yeah you know we know what's going on with the lamp. But I want to focus on the metal rod because the metal rod actually have several forces acting on it. Teacher, what are the forces? Ah, well, let me let me label them one by one. Ah. So number one, there's a cable that is pulling on the metal rod. So there's obviously tension in this direction. Ladies and gentlemen, rope is used for pulling. Okay, so that's why the tension here is like this. Yes, I know there's another tension here, but this tension is on the wall. And is the wall our main character here? No. Not our main character. We don't care. Don't want to care. All right. So we only draw the forces acting on the metal rod. So I'm only drawing equilibrium. So only draw forces on the rod. Okay. What else? Teacher, metal rod got weight. Ah, you are right. Metal rod has weight. So I'm going to draw maybe, but let's assume this is uniform, all right? So right somewhere in the middle is the center of gravity. So the mg will act downwards. mg. Okay, what else, Archer? What else? Well, second thing is that the lamp will pull the metal rod down. So you will have another mg here. Now, my friends, let's say the lamp, or I call this uh, m2g, okay? And maybe the metal rod is w1. 
哎呀，不 W one W two 啦，那 happy 啦 ，OK。So putting the lamp there shifts the center of gravity, right? You combine W one and W two, the center of gravity will shift towards somewhere here. Of course, where exactly we don't know. It really depends on how heavy the lamp is compared to the metal rod and how long the metal rod is. Okay, but we can be sure that the center of gravity is shifted towards the lamp. So let's say now this is your new center of gravity. Okay, so here I'm gonna change color. This one is the new. Uh, center of gravity. So we'll call this W1 plus W2. Okay, and then just label here. This is the new COG. Okay, so the W1, W2, uh, I'm not going to keep it because I want to keep my diagram clean. All right. Okay, what other forces is acting here? The metal rod is touching the wall. Touching the wall. Surely we have some combination of normal force and also uh, reaction force. I mean reaction force and also friction because the wall is not smooth. Man. Okay, But oftentimes here is where people get stuck. Long. Teacher, how do I know what is the direction of the normal force or the forces at the end of the rod? I'm going to call this maybe this point here A. How do I know the force of the wall on the rod. Well, of course, we can use clockwise, counterclockwise moment. We can do all sorts of analysis. Okay, but I'm here to draw vector diagrams. So I know that for zero net force. Okay, for right here, for net force to be zero, I should get something like a cyclic triangle of forces i don't know lah maybe maybe it may not be right angle i don't know maybe something like this so the force will actually look like it's moving in a circle okay like so not a circle like in a cycle like so so that when it travels in a cycle you don't really have a resultant so i expect a cyclic force okay and number two i also expect they them to have the same line of action all right so for net torque to be zero, okay, the all vectors must have the same, uh, must be a uh, must be have must intersect, okay. So how should I put this? All vectors will intersect at a common point. Course, teacher, where's the common point? Well, let's see. Yeah. If I extrapolate this W1 and W2, the new center of gravity, it will be here. Okay, so this is your new center of gravity. And then I think to myself, hey, this means your third and final force have to act in this direction so that it looks like it, it is directed towards here. This is your R. This is the force of the wall on the rod. Which these are very weird there. What type of force is this? Ah? Well, this force of the wall on the rod consists of two forces. Okay, what do I mean by that? Let me draw here for you. I said this is your R. There, it is a combination of your normal force because you have N here. 90 degree to the wall. Remember? Because the wall is here. Right? So you have the normal force and you also have friction. My dudes. Friction here. So this force of the wall on the rod is the resultant of friction and normal force. Both friction and normal force is the one that causes this uh, arc. All right, so they'll pass through that common point. So right now, this is how I can use vector diagram to actually draw and label the direction of R. So if this is an MCQ question and they ask you to determine the direction of R, this is what you do. Lo. You find the arrow that matches this direction. Okay, but if let's say I want to complete a diagram of forces. Okay, so this is what I can do. La. I can take, I can try to sketch out. Okay, let me sketch out everyone. I have R that's roughly in this direction. Okay, 
followed by Mg, or basically W1 plus W2, that is pointing downwards. And I will have a vector T that is in some upwards and to the left direction. So T would be maybe something like this. You see now? This is a cyclic triangle. So if you can draw a cyclic triangle, this means net force is zero. Okay? If you extrapolate and you look at the line of action of the force, this point here, this point where they intersect all, uh, this point here, common intersection, means your net torque is zero. All right? Because all the line, if I take torque about this point, or there's no perpendicular distance. If I take torque about this green color dot, there's no perpendicular distance. So that torque is zero. Okay? So questions could be as simple as find the value of R. So if you can build this triangle, and if you have enough values, you can use the vector triangle to find R. Or it can be something like uh, draw an arrow to indicate the direction of R. So a lot of times people uh, don't know whether they should draw it they tend to draw it just horizontally because they're thinking about normal force, but there's also some amount of friction, okay? So this is the vector diagram for this particular horizontal one.